I didn't tell her. I went for five nights and I didn't tell her. Ooh, someone's going to get bitched. All right, grow up, please. And as I switch on my phone, I can see I've had 30 missed calls from her, followed with messages of threat. Damn, you're right. I wouldn't get too close to her, and the next time I see Jess, she has a bad Aiden. Oh, who can blame her? I'm literally like a young Arnold Schwarzenegger, though without muscles and would probably be pushed over by the wind. Yeah, we get it. You're weak as fuck. Arnold Schwarzenegger? Are you drunk, Aiden? Because judging by this series on the Joao the Lamo podcast, you sound like you are. Yeah, that's enough of you, audience. <laughs> oh, we're not done. You're more like a bucktooth Ryan Reynolds, only fugly. Yeah, that's a big insult. Although, as I consider him to be quite hot, I'll take that compliment whilst giving you, the audience, the finger. Dick, I'm right back at you. <laughs> Jesus, there were hundreds of text messages here. Is she a mental asylum patient? Yeah, I dare you to ask her that. No, you think I wouldn't? Because it sounds like you're onto something smart there. Yeah, I wouldn't. She scares me. She's like Mike Myers in those shit houses of horror movies. What's it called? Scream? Yeah, it's Halloween, dumbass. Always the first to make me feel stupid, aren't you, audience? You think that makes you intelligent? Uh, yeah, jackass. You're messing with the wrong person. What? You think I'm not tough enough to... Well, actually, I have no other speech to follow that up with. Uh, apart from I'm not tough enough. Simple. Like your brain. Thanks. You, the audience, are getting on my last fucking nerve. You're like a shark hanging at the edge of my balls. Yes, but don't leave this episode. I'd be lost without you. Yeah, I thought I was an excellent singer. But now, I know I'm to Mariah Carey's level. What, is he fucking deaf? At no, I'm not, audience. Anyway, all Jess's text read like she was Glenn Close in that stalker movie. Yeah, we haven't seen it. Yeah, you're, yeah, we're too young and not stupid like you. Oh, if I'm so dumb, would I be blue mooning you right now? No, I thought so. Take that to your chamber and smoke it. Yeah, that made zero sense. Oh, it did. Think it over. Hang on. But don't. I told you. Anyway, it's a pretty wonderful movie. You should Google it. Just type into Google, I want to watch a movie about stalking so I can one day have the FBI knock on my door to arrest my ass. Oof, I know. You're a dick, dude. I'll grow the fuck up, but you are. Okay, you're muted. That's enough of you. So where were we? Mom's driving me home. She picked me up from the airport. My twin brother sit at the back, kicking my seat. Little shits. Mom's talking. I listen. She tells me that Jess has been over to our house five days in a row wanting to know where the hell I've been. Now, to me, that's fucking creepy. But as mom has had no one helping her with my brothers since I've been gone, she's actually been a wonderful help. My mom says she likes her enough to marry her. And added on that if Jess ever announces that she's gay, to let her know, which she would be interested in a heartbeat. Well, I've just learned my mom is bisexual. Yeah, she's not bisexual. She sounded like she was full gay, dummy. I need that correction. Where's our thank you? Oh, sorry. Here it is. My mom goes back to talking about Jess. Jerk, I know. But this jerkiness makes you come back to the podcast. So, I'll wait for your thank you when your simple mind is intelligent enough to give it. Wait, hang on. Are, are we... are we just... Are we sidestepping that huge bombshell of her being into chicks? <laughs> Ask her some fucking question. But what the hell do you think we're here for, dummy? To hear your pathetic voice? Her mom continues. Is she a stalker? I mean, if she is, I'd be scared for you and also be excited, because I finally know my son. My creepy son won't die alone. He'd have someone out there, however crazy they are, love them. However crazy she is. My mom, ladies and gents. What's her phone number? We want to date her. Oh, sure. I'd give that out. It's 555-I-fucked-yo-mama-455. Hope that helps you, audience. Dick. As ever, your annoyance is my delight and pleasure. My mom continues. Don't jump on her, because I don't think you'll ever meet anyone as pretty as her. She's gorgeous. I try to tune my mom out. Why do we agree with her? Despite us never seeing a photo of Jess, well, we know she's fit. I do her in a beat. Thank you. Any other cunt wants to give me reviews. Now, back to the story. Please. It's getting interesting. I mean, if... 
I was a lesbian. She was in my room trying to burgle me. Well, she fucking gets it. Right up her. And then I'd lower her head down, let her do her magic. Yeah, it saddens me to confirm my mom seems to be gay, and my 14-year-old brothers are listening intently to this chat. This is a twisted family if there ever was one. You think, audience? Try a more fitting insult. Okay, my mom didn't actually say that to me. We're not freaks. I had an image of our last time. You know, on the last episode of the series for the Joao the Lamo podcast. Yeah, I'm still on that hate train. Me and Jess and our last night together did things. The same things my mom just mentioned. Jess that night told me she loved me. I had my lips on her. Whoa! Language aiding. This is a family podcast. Yeah, sure, dude. I hear you, the audience, saying, I know we're in sync. Anyhow, yep, I love that word. It makes you sound fancy. Yeah, that's why I say fancy means... You know what? You keep saying it. it sounds great on you. And thank you, audience. I hadn't been in a situation like that. I hadn't been in love with anyone before. I don't even think what we had was love. Well, if it was, it was something really twisted, I'd bet. Oh, you think, dummy? She said like it was something important. And it wasn't. What we had was sex. Well, nothing more. I know what love does to people. How it hurts people. How it destroys lives. Love is evil. Emotionless is my only friend. Oh, damn. You've gone cold-hearted. Fuck you, alright? You don't know my full story yet. I've been through shit. This fucked up brain. It's lived a life already. It's watched its most precious loved ones die in its arms. Okay, I'm going way too far. Well, technically I... Well, technically I haven't. I'm just trying to go along with the dramatic music. But I have seen fucked up shit. Does that count? I'll say it does for the sake of progressing the story. Well, like what, dick? Fuck you, audience. I don't have to answer to you. But for the context of the story, I will. I caught my father in bed with his secretary when I was 12 years old. I came home from school. I thought no one was home, and I wanted to play FIFA like a normal idiot. Yeah, I'm calling all game players idiots. Losing friends, Aiden. Yeah, I don't give a shit, brain. I came home and saw random clothes leading up to my parents' bedroom. I heard noises. And being a fucked up clueless kid, I wanted to take a peek and find out what they were. I opened my parents' door, and there she was. A redhead, bouncing on my dad's... You know what. I took a pick. Immature. Yeah, you told me to do it, brain. Oh, we the audience agree with your brain. Oh yeah, carry on. Anyway, later, when mom came home, I showed it to her. To cut the story short, my mom grabbed a knife and stabbed my dad in the heart. Okay, that's a lie. I was trying to get your attention and I've done that. Good job, Aiden. So like I was saying, I've been through shit. So I have every right not to say I love you back. Anyway, after she said it, she wanted me to say it back. Mom, we're both 18. We're unemployed. We're in the first year of our college life. Who knows where we'll be in a couple of months. Well, you, Jess, could be knocked up with Egon's baby soon. Well, that's if they fuck. Oh, they do. I'm not boneheaded. Even more reasons not to say it. She needs to choose who she wants before she can exalt me with her love. Exalting? Do I even know what that word means? You never used it before. My grandpa must have used it last night when he was preaching God's gospel to me for three hours straight. Sorry, Gramps, but this dick is headed for hell. That's for sure. And back to my point. I wouldn't say it to her, and that's when she broke my nose. Well, actually, her car wouldn't start, so she jumped in mine and drove us, and a deer jumped in front of us. She stopped my car, and my head hit the dashboard violently. Whatever happened to you wearing a seatbelt? I mean, we welcome you not wearing one if we get to witness your death. But even still, okay, yes, audience, we have no other words to follow up with. We'd like to witness it. Mother fucking audience. Fucking assholes. Like, I think, how the fuck did I survive that shit? It's a goddamn miracle. Thank you, good, kind Jesus. Um, if you exist, I'm going to hedge a bet in the next accident you have. I'll let you die. Okay, I will ignore that, audience. Anyway... She drove me home, got out of the car, ordered an Uber, and left to go home. Grandpa then immediately texted, Can't wait to see you tomorrow, son. 
and I remembered my trip to go see my gramps. I asked my mom if I could delay it. She said, no, he's been looking forward to this. So I went, but I forgot my charger. And the small town gramps lived in doesn't exactly have an Apple store. So I was fucked. On the way back from the airport, my mom had a charger. And that's when I saw the hundreds of texts from Jess. We pull up on our drive and there she is, waiting. She paces. This will not be good. We might have a fight. The car door is open. Everyone gets out. But I stay put. My mom gives me the car keys. And mouths to me. Talk to her. Talk to her. Oh boy. This might not get pretty for me. Jess calmly walks over. She aims to open the doors. But it's locked. I open them. And she gets in and sits. I know what you're thinking. This is so uncomfortable, dude. Or maybe you just want to get to her without actually... Jeez, let's all pretend this ain't my goddamn story I'm telling. Jess says, I shouldn't have said that. I know I scared you off. It was rash and I felt like I could lose and I didn't want that to. I like you so much, Aiden. The thought of you being mad and away from me scares the life out of me. I can't. I pretend to yawn, but she swats me hard on the shoulder. I feign that I'm hurt. <laughs> Ow, that really hurt. She smiles. She asks me if we're cool. I kiss her for a beat. She stops, and she says, I've missed those. Only me, I reply. Can I ask you something? She stops mid-sentence. What? I ask. Would you like to have dinner with me and my parents? It's a last-minute thing my parents have. They just got engaged, and they invited the CEO of their company, and they need me to bring a presentable guest. So you couldn't find anyone suiting that criteria, so you thought you'd ask me? Jess replies with, No, I wanted to ask you first. It's a sliver of hope in our relationship there, but I have to be careful with my heart here. She's such a good girl, dude. Grow a pair. Thank you, audience. It's good to hear your voice again. Anyway, our thing is delicate. The ice may look strong, but you don't actually know until you've thrown a rock at it. Or check the weather forecast. You should ask Econ. Whoa, you have a golden chance to get your girl's family to like you, hence winning her heart, and you'd rather give the chance to her wacko of a boyfriend. You're a fucking dick, Aiden. You fucking are. Thank you, in her thoughts. She says, I want you. I'd never want my dads to meet Egon. He's equipment, nothing more. Equipment? Damn, they fucked. Hurts me. It may, but we're enjoying the heck out of it. It's like Christmas coming early. She says nothing else. She pleads with her eyes for me to come to her dad's with her. Please, just this once? I soften and agree. I'm not too sure this will be good for our relationship. But whatever makes her happy, I guess. She kisses me with excitement. I sense I'm going to regret this. There's no doubt about that. I fucking will. Hell awaits my foolish creation.